that more people are talking openly about these days. Certainly people like me have long understood what it means. Secretary Clinton, can you tell us what the term white privilege means to you? And can you give me an example from your life or career when you think you have benefited from it? Well... I mean, where do I start? Uh... Uh, I think most of her privilege is because she latched on to the back and the coattails of uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, Clinton privilege, maybe they should talk about. Welcome to Gimme Five, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, this, this, this interview with Hillary yesterday at this forum on Fusion Television, so revealing. What she should have said was, look, yeah, did white, did I have advantage in some instances because I'm white? Maybe. But I worked hard. I did this. I, I took advantage of every opportunity. I, had, I kept on the straight and narrow. I, but no, no. Instead, she plays the game, plays the game, make it seem like only white people could do well because we're white. Here's more. For me, you know, look, I was born white, middle class, in the middle of America. I went to good public schools. I had a, a very strong, supportive family. Um, I had a lot of great um, experiences growing up. I went to a, a wonderful college. I went to law school. I never really um, knew what was or wasn't part of the privilege. I just knew that I was a lucky person. All right, you know, that, please. I, I, this, is, this is just too much. Now she talks about a time when she babysat. Um, underprivileged kids or kids from poorer families watch I remember going out there taking care of these adorable little kids um, and I kind of thought well you know they're very different from me I mean they've got different experiences but they were just little kids and then at the end of the day at the end of this long road because there are all these sort of housing units at the end of this long road the bus stopped and the parents and the older brothers and sisters got out and when the little kids saw them, they just dropped everything and began running for their mothers and their fathers, holding their arms out. I'm not sure what, how that relates to white privilege. So the underprivileged kids, when they saw their parents come back, the kid she was babysitting, dropped everything and ran to their parents with their arms out? My kid did that every day when he was a kid. Now the dog runs to me, but he ran to me every single day. Dad! And down the hall. What's that got to do with white privilege? What, what on earth is she talking about? And one more. I remember it like it was yesterday watching that, and I was thinking, I used to do that with my father. And I'm watching these kids and their families, they have to work so hard. And the place they live is not very nice. And I just felt, you know, I have a different kind of life. I didn't call it a a particular name but it was a different life and I knew that she just admitted she did it with her father so what's unique about what those underprivileged kids did I don't know all right and then she weighed in on uh, on white terrorism do you believe that white terrorism and extremism is as much a threat to some in this country as something like ISIS we have all kinds of uh, threats uh, in our country and I wouldn't discount any of them I think we have to take them all seriously. And many of those threats are fueled by the gun violence that we face every single day. And then, of course, as we documented earlier, she went on to talk about, given examples of white terrorism, Timothy McVeigh, although she did not name him, um, that's white terrorism? I mean, that, that's a white guy who blew up a building. That's not in the name of being white. It's not even in the name of religion. And then she talked about when police terrorize neighborhoods. That's right. White cops terrorizing black neighborhoods. This woman wants to be president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, pray, pray. Justice Department, FBI, indict, indict. And by the way, indict. Thanks for watching.